Batman is a character I've been a huge fan of for a very long time. The Dark Knight is my favorite film of all time. I have read so many Batman comics they could fill up my entire basement. Batman and Spider-Man are easily my favorite comic book characters ever. You get it, I like Batman. In fact, I like Batman so much to the point where I've set out to review the entire Arkham series as if my health wasn't failing enough. I first tried out this series when I played Arkham City at a friend's house years ago when I was younger. Soon enough, I got my parents to get the first to for me as this was before either Arkham Origins or Arkham Knight had released, so I have a lengthy history with this series in general. With that said, this series started off from humble beginnings. This game really didn't have a lot to live up to. I mean, there were Batman games before this, but none of them were really good. <laughs> no! Okay, you know what, I take back everything I said. Batman Dark Tomorrow is a fucking masterpiece. <laughs> Before this game, there weren't really any good Batman games, and there weren't many good superhero games in general, which is really weird to look back on, considering that the Arkham series is now finished, and we also have stuff like Spider-Man PS4. Before this game, the best comic book game you could probably think of is something like Spider-Man for the PS1, but apart from that and a few others, that's basically it. However, Arkham Asylum came out and changed all of that, and I think for the better. We've seen a lot of great comic book games over the years because of this game. This game was a great stepping stone for things that would come in its future, and I'm gonna be saying that in different variations a lot throughout this video, so prepare yourself. So without further ado, let's get into this. Rocksteady Studios was founded in 2004 out of the ashes of Argonaut Games by ex-employees after the studio filed for bankruptcy. Their first game was Urban Chaos Riot Response, a first-person shooter developed for the PlayStation 2 and original Xbox in 2006. After this, Rocksteady joined up with Warner Brothers Entertainments for the publishing rights of their games and got the rights to make a game based off of Batman in early 2007. They began discussing its concept in May of that year, and by September of 2007, the game officially started production at Rocksteady under the direction of Stephen Hill and Paul Crocker. As I previously stated, this game really didn't have a whole lot to live up to at all. During this time, a lot of licensed games had reputations of being awful, really subpar, underwhelming games, with a few exceptions like that of Spider-Man 2 or KOTOR. So while that game didn't have all that much to live up to, the developers sort of did, and I'll tell you what I mean. As I said earlier, Rocksteady was founded out of the ashes of Argonaut Games, and Argonaut Games are responsible for co-developing the original Star Fox on the SNES. And while the name of Star Fox doesn't really mean any much anymore today in 2020, you have to understand how big it was in 19. 93 and how it pioneered the dogfight combat genre for games to follow like Star Wars Rogue Squadron and Ace Combat. With that, a project with subverted expectations was being put into the hands of a brainchild of a lesser known company that was half responsible for one of Nintendo's biggest IPs of the 90s. With that said, Batman Arkham Asylum was officially announced in August of 2008 with a trailer that revealed that the official voice cast from Batman the Animated Series that ran for four seasons from 1992 to 1995 would be reprising their role for this game, which included Kevin Conroy as Batman, Mark Hamill as the Joker, Bob Hastings as Commissioner Gordon, and many others. In its own weird kind of way, this was kind of like a reunion for the voice cast of Batman the Animated Series almost a decade and a half after it ended. Rocksteady also began brainstorming ideas for the sequel several months before this game's eventual completion, which is an explanation as to why Arkham City is teased numerous times throughout this game. Then, after nearly two years in development, people finally got to play the game as Batman Arkham Asylum was released on August 25th, 2009 for Xbox 360 and PS3, while a PC port would be released a month later. To the surprise of absolutely no one in hindsight, Arkham Asylum was a huge leap forward for superhero games and just beat-em-ups in general. And nowhere else is this better exemplified than in the gameplay department. I've beaten this game three times now, and I can safely say that for a time, this easily had the best gameplay of any superhero game ever made. There was something so nice in 2009 about controlling Batman so fluidly and the game playing so effortlessly that still holds true today over a decade after 
after the game's initial release. Since then, I've started to realize that there's at least one thing that one Arkham game does better than the rest. Arkham Asylum has the best atmosphere and gameplay, Arkham City has the best story, Arkham Origins has the best boss fights, Arkham Knight has the best... Uh, uh, moving on, let's talk about the combat. The Arkham series has long been praised for its combat as a whole, and I'll give credit where it's due, the combat is very fluid and works really well, but where I think Arkham Asylum in particular falls flat in terms of its combat compared to the other games in the series is its depth. And that's where my sort of opinion on Asylum starts to come in in general. This is a great game, especially for its time, but it also serves as a great stepping stone for all the games to follow. I don't think this this is a bad game, it's a great game, nor do I think this is the worst in its series at all, it's way better than the last two, but it is a great stepping stone for gameplay mechanics that would be implemented into the games that followed this one. It served as a great prelude to where else Rocksteady could take the series, and with Arkham City they definitely did that. The combat was amazing itself, but where the gameplay truly shines I think is the stealth system. Batman is like the perfect fit for a stealth system, it's like second nature. The game's stealth mechanics, mixed with its general combat, mixed with the boss fights, just makes the game's intensity really good and it makes it work really well. And oh yeah, that's another thing, boss fights! Besides normal combat, another thing the Arkham series is really well known for is the phenomenal boss fights in Arkham Asylum is no exception. The boss fights in this game are absolutely superb. I hear a lot of people talking about how amazing the Scarecrow and Poison Ivy boss fights are, Killer Croc is another good one. The thing that makes Arkham Asylum's boss fights so good is they felt so fluid and natural, especially for the time. I've said that a lot throughout this video already, but what I didn't tell you is that there are a lot of parts where this game kind of feels clunky, which makes the fluid parts that much more refreshing. And again, this is the first in a series of four games, so the next three would only focus on polishing what this game had already gotten right in the first place. Much like the open world. There's a lot of misconception about this game and whether or not it's truly open world, and I'm here to settle that once and for all by saying, no, it's really not. It's open world in the same way a game like Borderlands or The Outer Worlds is open world, which basically means no, it's not fully open world. And you know what? For this game in particular, I actually kinda prefer it that way, to be honest. This game has a much more linear design to it, which makes the parts that are more open give you the incentive to want to explore, which leads me to the Riddler trophies. Riddler trophies are more or less just collectibles, but like any game should with its collectibles, this game makes you feel quite accomplished whenever you get one. And while they do seem sometimes like they're hard to come by, they're not Arkham City levels where they're always feeling like just a total bitch to find. I'll get more into that when I review Arkham City, but for now let's stick to this. Rocksteady made the exploration in this game so seamless, which is amazing considering it's not even open world in the first place. That's only further enhanced by detective mode, which is kind of like an x-ray setting that other games would kind of put their own spin on in the future, notably Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions with its spider sense mode. The most I can really say as a blanket statement for Arkham Asylum's gameplay in general is that it's the most responsible for this game being as good as it is, but it also also served as a great stepping stone for what was to come out of its future. The story for Arkham Asylum is very simple, but that isn't a bad thing at all, especially considering the fact that this was the beginning of a series that would eventually start to elevate its stakes every five minutes. The basic premise is that Batman has caught the Joker and is taking him to Arkham Asylum, but as usual, he has an ace up his sleeve and manages to escape and let everyone out, sending everything and everyone into complete chaos, and the story consists of Batman trying to unfuck the whole situation. I usually don't care if an adaptation of a comic book character deviates itself from its comic source material, but even then I can absolutely say that the people who wrote the story for this game know the Batman source material really well. This game's story seems like it could be a classic Batman comic and a really good one at that. Let's go over the characters in this game. So first up is obviously Batman. In this particular game, there really isn't that much to say about Batman that people don't already know by second nature. It's Batman that's fairly simple. Kevin Conroy reprises his role 
voicing him in this game and does a great job exactly as he did a decade and a half earlier. Then there's his rogues gallery, starting with the Joker, and this game is where I first realized how versatile Mark Hamill can really be. There's always been an ever-long debate as to who plays the best Joker and who does the role best. Is it Heath Ledger in The Dark Knight? Is it Jack Nicholson from the 1989 Tim Burton Batman film? Joaquin Phoenix delivered an excellent and unique take on the Joker in the 2019 film that was unlike anything we had seen of the character at that point. Here's a good one, John DiMaggio from Batman Under the Red Hood gives an amazing portrayal of the Joker that I feel is often overlooked, much like the movie itself. However, what I had been building up with that whole tangent and what you're probably anticipating me talking about is Mark Hamill's portrayal of the Joker and how amazing it is. I feel like Mark Hamill is honestly most people's definitive Joker and with this game it's not hard to see why. His portrayal of the Joker shows just how versatile an actor he is. What I realized making this video is the fact that I think Mark Hamill might actually be better known for his voice acting roles than just his standard acting roles when you take everything and put it together as a whole. Other than Luke Skywalker, there isn't really all that much that comes to mind for me when it comes to his live action roles as an actor. He played the trickster in both iterations of The Flash, but I don't really know how many people remember that to be honest honest, and he also played Chucky in the Child's Play remake, but I don't really know how many people cared. In voice acting roles, he thrives. He thrives in his voice acting roles, and nowhere is that more evident than in his portrayal of the Joker in the Arkham series and the animated series, even though he didn't voice him in Arkham Origins. I feel like as far as staying true to the comics goes, Mark Hamill's Joker is still the definitive one in the eyes of most. Before The Dark Knight, most people really just looked at the Joker as the wacky campy comic book villain, and that's exactly what he is in this game. As I said earlier, I feel like this game has this classic Batman comic feel to it that all three of the other games lack. It's very imaginative, and I love how nothing is shoved down your throat. It doesn't tell you everything, and it leaves some stuff up to your imagination to decide for yourself. Like in the first few minutes of the game, when the Joker first escapes, and he says he has bombs all over Gotham. I feel like a lot of people could take this and just be like, well, how did he plant the bombs all over Gotham? in such an amount of time and line it up so well, or how did Harley Quinn access the security feeds and take Commissioner Gordon hostage so quickly? Instead of telling you, the game lets you decide for yourself. This game doesn't tell you everything. Eventually, beating all these different villains and boss fights leads to the final boss, a giant mohawked joker that looks like he's been eating combos, drinking monster energy, and binging Rick and Morty while touching himself. After you've beat him, you finish the game and the stakes are set for the sequel. The story for Arkham Asylum is everything it should have been and more. It's insanely well written and well told, but at the same time a great stepping stone for what would come in the future. Batman Arkham Asylum, upon its release in August of 2009, was received really well and got really great reviews, albeit a plethora of reviewers coining a phrase that is now an infamous meme to myself and my other fellow Donkey fans. If you know, you know. This game was a gateway to not just its sequels, but also an insane amount of superhero games that followed. Some better than others, for every Spider-Man PS4 there's an X-Men Destiny, but a lot of them are really good and worthy of the praise they receive. On Metacritic, the critic score for this game is a 9 91 and the user score is an 8.7, which is really good. One of the particular reviews is calling it a massive triumph. I don't really know anybody that doesn't like this game, necessarily. Even if you really don't like this game or the Arkham series in general, you can't deny how much it accomplished. I myself highly recommend you pick up this game for yourself. For a beat-em-up game, it was and still is super refreshing with a compelling story and addicting gameplay. Rocksteady managed to complete the seemingly impossible task of deviating enough away from the normal Batman character while also not even upsetting the comic elitists. I wonder why you couldn't do that, huh, Ben? The game is so good that itself and Arkham City both got remasters in 2016, so there's no reason you shouldn't buy this game. Just fucking buy it, dude. With the dust settled, I think that this game is amazing and deserves all the praise it got. It's an amazing project that fueled the creativity of so many others that would follow it. You could really tell that more than anything with this game, Rocksteady was focused on making it good and they wouldn't settle for anything subpar. They were very passionate about this project. 
This game was made by people with love for Batman. It was a love letter to the Batman character and classic comics that this game was based off of. This would only follow into Arkham City, which we'll get to when I review that, whenever that may be, but I do want to get a couple other videos out of the way first. My name is Johnny Seizure, I hope you enjoyed this video, more are on the way, and I will see you soon.